and welcome to another edition of the Amazing Art Show. We are at the Arlington Art Museum for the Bowie Seguin Network. We've got three shows for you. We're starting with this one. We've got some amazing artwork to look at tonight. Let's get going. down here in the junior high area at this time and I have Nikki with me who's going to tell us a little bit about her artwork. Hi, um, with my artwork I just used black sharpie to outline it and um, the whole theme of it was what our last name and what it meant and for mine I used oil pastels and water just to blend it out and that's the main, main thing I was really working for is just blending and trying to get all the colors to mix together. And how did you come up with your symbol for what your last name meant? Oh, my last name, it meant like new life and um, like royalty. So that's where I got the crown from and the flowers. Very nice. Is this your first time to have our work at the art show? Actually, no, it's not. You've been here before? You're a frequent flyer then? Yes, a couple of times. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thanks. My name is Corday, and this is my detail finder. It was a project for my seventh grade art class. And I chose football because I really enjoy football, and I use oil pastels. I'm Heather Bryan from Owsley Junior High. I'm an eighth grader, and I decided to draw a horse from our detail finder that our teacher allowed us to draw. And so I used Prismacolored pencils, and I liked blending and shading it together. I wanted to do Pocky because everybody likes Pocky, and it's just something that everybody will relate to because... Um, I used color pencil and that's it. Very nice. And we were talking, you and I were talking a second ago about what style of art this is. Can you tell our younger viewers what it is? It's pop art. Very nice. Now, I have to ask you a question. I don't know what Pocky is. What is it? It is an Asian food that most of my friends eat every day. Is it sweet, salty, or what? It's a mixture between both. I think I need some of this. Thank you so much for sharing it with us tonight. No problem. It's kind of it's kind of a mixture of a few ideas for a range for the theme Rangers baseball since baseball season's about to start in like a month or so. I decided to hype up Rangers theme. So shoe here represents the athletic shoe of the um, Rangers baseball body and then as you can see right here the American League trophy Nice. And we've got baseballs on the side the greenness in the shoe right there symbolizes the playing field and then if you look where the trophy is standing that that symbolizes the the turf for home plate and then the blue sock as you can see holding up the ballpark um, symbolizes the, the high socks some players on the Rangers wear. And then got the bats on both sides. And then we have, of course, the ballpark. It took me two days to build. And um, obviously that was a breeze for me because I've, I've built, a lot, built a lot of a ballpark in the past. And um, it was a challenge for me to build that because I'm used to working on a larger scale. Oh, really? Like how large? Um, 49 to 50 inches large. Wow. So it was a challenge for me and I, I really wanted to put the ballpark on a ranger sculpture of a shoe. So Very nice. What is, the, what is this part of it made out of? It's actually made out of um, like a poster board. 
but the exterior, like this part, is made out of construction paper. And um, this, and like some of the stuff is made out of printer paper, but most of the stuff is made out of um, poster board, some construction paper, and some printer paper, and I used a lot of tape. Very nice. Well, I really appreciate you sharing that with us tonight. I've not seen anything like that in all my years of doing this, so congratulations. Well, thank you very much. We have moved upstairs, and we are in our elementary section, and I've got Miracle here with me, who has a miracle piece of artwork here. Tell me a little bit about your piece. My art teacher, Ms. Schmitz, she really helped me, and um, uh, uh, I we use scissors and we had to glue um, some tissue paper because it was a big piece of uh, black mellow paper and we had to draw a design and uh, cut it out and uh, flip it over and then we had to um, we got some tissue paper and we had to trace it. We had to trace it and then glue it on to each piece because each piece you had to do by itself. And um, how did you come up with your design? Um, I just I really like to draw stars. I draw stars a lot. You're into stars. I like it. Awesome. Is this your first time to have artwork with art show? Yes, ma'am. You're kind of like a star tonight, don't you think? Pretty cool, huh? Yes, ma'am. Thanks for talking with us. I have got a slew of artists here that we're going to be talking to from Piercy Elementary. And I'm going to start right here. Tell me what your name is. Carmen Guerra. And then tell me about your work. Well, um, we were doing a project where um, we had to make birds. And there were chicks. So um, I drew some chicks right here. Very whimsical chicks. Mm-hmm. There. And what, med what medium were you working in? Um, well... I used um, crayons and paint, like we colored over them. Very nice. And how did you come up with kind of what all of them were going to do? Because they all seem to be doing different things. They're like little dancing chicks. Like, I was thinking about like, well, I was thinking like what might be happening. Like, one dropped an egg <laughs> and like there's a king and I just made a whole bunch of different ones. Very nice. And I know that this, you're back again. This is my second time to see you. You must be some kind of an artist, lady. Very nice. I'm really glad to see you back again. Thanks for talking with me. All right, and tell me your name. Adrian Von Pochty. Very nice. Adrian, tell me a little bit about your work. Um, it's a giraffe at the zoo, and there are some other animals in the background, and it just was fun to do. Very nice. And I know, I see that you did like a close-up because we don't see the bottom half of the giraffe. We just see the top part. So we kind of zoomed in. How did you come up with that idea? Um, that's what we were doing in art. We were trying to actually uh, get it to where it kind of popped out at you and you got a little bit of animals in the background. Very nice. And what is this? What's the black right here? It's to make it stand out. Very nice. Thank you so much for talking with me tonight. And tell me your name, sir. Colin. Very nice. And can you tell me a little bit about your work? My work thanks. I use shapes. I use shapes. And I also use crazy scissors to cut out the black stripes for the zebra. And I thought if I made it back round, it would make it really good. So. Very nice. And were you, got, were you studying zebras, or did everybody get to pick their own animal? We were studying zebras. I love zebras. What do you think about zebras? I think they're, I think they're black and white stuff. I could stare at them for hours because they have such awesome patterning on their bodies. Don't you think that's awesome? Mm -hmm. Very nice. Is this your, your first time to have artwork at the art show? Mm -hmm. What do you think about having artwork here? Makes me really happy. You should be very proud. Thank you for talking with me. And tell me your name. Erica. And Erica, tell me about your artwork. Well, my artwork was this big sweater, and Miss Lee, she had this orange sweater, not decorated, so we got to trace it, and we cut it out when we traced, and then we got to decorate it, 
and then that's how we made it. Very nice. And then um, your big sweater that you were making, what did you use to add the color to it? We used like, I think I used crayons and markers. Very nice. Do you have any sweaters that look like that in your closet? Well, no. Do you want one? I wish I would. Maybe you should become a designer and then you could design one like that and then we all could have one. Hmm. Maybe that is a good idea. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking with me. It's shapes that I created and it kind of looks like blobs to me. All right. So you were using more kind of organic shapes? Yes. Very nice. And then what did you use to add your color? I used markers and um, some Sharpies. Very nice. Is this your first time to have artwork at the art show? Yes. What do you think about that? It's kind of scary. It's scary. It's cool at the same time. Awesome. Well, I think I'm looking at this, and I think I think you have a future in this. So I'm going to keep my eye on you because I think I'm going to see you again. Thank, Thank you. you for talking with me, Catherine. Tell me a little bit about your piece. Well, um, I actually drew this piece right after we got a new exchange student from China, and um, we like clicked and we became really best friends. So I decided I was inspired and I wanted to draw a picture about friendship, and it turned into this. Very nice. Now, I'm assuming that since she came over from China, there was a little bit of a language barrier. How did that go? Well, she actually knew more English than I expected her to. She knew quite a bit, but still, it was kind of a boundary. But I think that now we're closer than I've been with any of one of my friends that I've ever been with. So I'm really happy. That is awesome. Now you're in the sixth grade, so you're moving on to junior high next year. Is, is she also going with you to same junior high? Um, I believe so. All right. I, I hope that you guys can stay friends for a long, 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 long time. Thank you so much for speaking with me. Thank you. Avery, tell me a little bit about your piece that you have here tonight. It was leaving poem. I added black to make it make this stand out. This was actual metal paint feathers to also make it stand out. Very nice. What is this part right here made out of? This is made out of clay. Very nice. And so then you just use regular yarn to weave through, and then did you tuck the feathers in last, or were they in there to begin with? They were last. Last. Very nice. How did you come up with the blue and the black? First I started with blue, then I was, and then I changed my mind. I was wanting to do black, so I did a pattern in black and blue. Very nice. Is this your first time to have artwork in the art show? Yes. What do you think about it? I think it's amazing. I think it is too. Thank you so much for sharing it with us tonight. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, Zaida, tell me a little bit about your artwork that you have here at the museum. Well, it's about a dog with the um, with the little little animal by a tree. It's like at home outside in the yard, and well, it's like t um, like nervous. It's like. Very nervous. Um, Who's nervous? The dog. And the dog is nervous. Why? Yes. The dog is nervous like to talk to the little animal. The dog is nervous to talk to the little animal. Is he afraid of the little animal or what? Yes. Yes. I love this. Did you write a story to go along with this? No. Uh -uh. You just illustrated your story that was in your mind. Very nice. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Jacob has got some George Rodrigue inspired artwork up here. Tell me a little bit about your blue dog. When I first did this, I was thinking, I like wolves, so I thought maybe draw a wolf. And then I know yellow and blue mix together really good. So I think I'd put a half yellow and then half blue. So um, that's how, I'm, and then how I know Wolves like to uh, howl at the moon, so I thought I would put a moon in the back. And so I would put the nightshade in and then the ground. And, uh. Very nice. And then do you remember what y'all were studying? Were you studying line, shape, color? Yes, we were uh, studying how, like, uh, the artist, he would make um, the blue dog, which is a, do a dog that's blue that's Dogs aren't usually blue, so that's what we're learning, like, animals that aren't usually their color. Yeah. 
Very good. Well, I think that you did a fantastic job. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Thank you. Good job. Kevin, tell me a little bit about your artwork. My artwork is drawn by crayon. The picture is about shapes. About shapes. Very nice. You've got lots of overlapping shapes there. And then you said that you colored it with crayon? Yeah. Very nice. Thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you. You're welcome. Ruth, tell me a little bit about your piece. Uh, my piece is about my nephew. When I thought of him, I thought of him as radiant because he always cries. Very nice. And what artist were you studying? Do you remember? Yeah, it was Keith Haring. That was Very good. Excellent. And, and then was this your first time to get to work on a canvas? Uh, actually, yes. That was the first time in sixth grade that I can work on a canvas. I think we're probably going to do more then. Very nice. What did you think? It's kind of different than working on a flat piece of paper. Yeah. Because um, on this, you can actually express your ideas, but on a piece of paper, you can't actually do much. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. You're welcome. Um, I really like this um, cake because like, it tells you um, my, favorite, my favorite holiday is Happy New Year's Day, and I want to draw a cake about it, so it's really cool to me. Very nice. It looks very delicious. You did a great job. It looks good enough to eat. Is this your first time to have artwork here at the art show? Um, no. No, you've had artwork here before? Yes. Very nice. Well, welcome back. Thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you. And we've dropped downstairs to come and check out some of the high school work tonight. I've got Caitlin here with me who's going to tell us a little bit about her winter scene. Hi. Um, it, was, it was done with acrylics and a palette night, which it's actually really hard to do with, but um, it was derived from a photograph that she gave the whole class and we had to make our own representation from that. Very nice. Was it your first time to work with the palette knife? Yes, ma'am. What did you think? I will probably won't do it again. <laughs> that was me too. I was like, I'm not digging this. Very nice. Okay, and so for our younger viewers who are just kind of getting started in this, um, can you tell me a little bit about how the perspective goes and how it's kind of angled in? Can you tell them about that a little bit? Um, it's called one point perspective. So there's like one dot in the middle and you draw coming towards that. And I know you would showed me that you've got several other pieces here tonight. So obviously you're a frequent flyer here. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you. This is um, supposed to be about, uh, it's like a little person sitting there on the edge. And he's like daydreaming about this girl, but she, all she wants to do is be free and not be, stay, like, stay with him. Very nice. That's very deep. Now, is the girl, is she symbolism for anybody in particular? Not really. I just, I, I've been getting into a lot of love story books and stuff, so... Found it, I found it interesting how usually the girls always want to be with the boys, but you never see one where the girl wants to just be free in herself. And then tell me a little bit about how did you decide that you wanted to come up with these pieces that would hang and pieces that would come out off of the surface? Well, the um, butterflies, they're like, I think of, I wanted it to be able to move so they're, they're able to fly and stuff, but the yellow is um, trees that they're coming off of, so... So she'll be able to always go back to her roots and not forget. Very nice. Thank you so much for sharing that with us tonight. All right, Brandon, tell me a little bit about your piece. Um, well, we had to make a little bit of a company. And I had, I had run out of ideas, actually, because I, I just couldn't come up with anything. And I asked if it could be, you know, made, uh, made for a real thing. So my teacher said no. So I finally came up with this because I, I've always enjoyed zombies, you know. And... It, it just hit me that, you know, why not a zombie survival shop? And it was a good idea. It is a good idea. All right, so you had to come up with, like, a business logo? Is that what you were saying? Yes, a, a parent logo. There's uh, different branches, but this is the main logo. For our younger viewers, can you tell me a little bit how about how you created this? Uh, I would use programs on the computer, uh, images from Google that I would just basically trace over to make them my own. And there it was. And I thought it looked... I thought it looked great, and apparently so did my teacher. Very nice. And then what um, what software were you using? Photoshop or Illustrator or what? I was using Illustrator and a bit of Photoshop. Very nice. That is a very nice work. I like it a lot. Very original. Thinking outside the box. I like it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks for talking with us. Noble, tell me a little bit about your piece. Um, This is my Nike artwork. I got the inspiration because favorite team is the Lakers, and uh, I don't really like the heat that much, but everybody compares it to all the time. 
So I figured I'd put an ad together and see who's is better on uh, Photoshop. Very nice. And so you just, you're kind of doing a comparison of the two, obviously. And um, I saw that you had a couple other pieces and they're kind of similar. So was this like one project that you were working on or was this a series that you were working on? Um, this was an ad. The other one that I had was just like a regular sort of artwork that I put together. Very nice. And do you always work in Photoshop? Not always. I usually like to draw on pen, but this was something new. So. Very nice. So is this your, I'm thinking this isn't your first time to have artwork here. Uh, actually it is. It is? No way. Well, that's awesome. So two pieces. First time. I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. All right. Thank you. Kian, tell me a little bit about your work. Um, well, it's a watercolor portrait. Um, I just, I like faces, so I like painting faces. And watercolor is one of my favorite mediums. Very nice. And then, so obviously it's not your typical kind of watercolor or your typical kind of portrait. So tell the viewers, how did you kind of come up with this concept of there would be this negative space, but then you also wanted to have these elements that were dripping in? What, where was your thought process on that? Um, it's kind of like an internal thing. Um, most people, they, they internalize things, so it kind of stays here. And then things sometimes leak out, you know, so that's why it's dripping down. Very nice. Now, so you said watercolor is your favorite medium? Mm -hmm. What other mediums do you like to work in? Um, acrylic, um, color pencil, marker. I like uh, uh, all of them. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. And is this your first time to have artwork here? Yes. Very nice. Some newcomers tonight. I love it. Well, thank you so much for sharing it with us. I love it. It's very nice. Thank you. Thanks. Capelia, tell me a little bit about your piece. Um, it's a mythical creature mixed with um, a lizard. So it's a minotaur and a lizard put together. Very nice. And what, what was kind of the theme of your project to get you going in this direction? Um, our assignment was to make a, to mix two creatures together to make one mythical creature. So that's what I did. Very nice. He's, he is kind of creepy. Yes, that was He's a little on the dark side. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Scary. Very nice. And is this your, um, I didn't see, are you your art too? Is this your... So your second year in ceramics? Uh, this is my first year in ceramics, my third art class. Very nice. So what, are you thinking you want to stay with ceramics or you want to go in a different direction? Um, I don't know. I think I'm going to probably go to art history next so I can get a wide variety of everything. Very nice. Do you have a medium that's your favorite that you like to work in? I think ceramics. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for sharing it with us. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Welcome back. We are at the Arlington and Lamar Network Art Show. We've got some amazing art to see. There are tons of people here. Everybody's taking it all in. Let's go check it out. Hi, we have Nancy here with us, who is the president of the Board of Trustees here at the Arlington Museum of Art. And Nancy, can you tell me a little bit about what does it mean to have all of these schools that come in and the kids and the parents? Tell me what you think. Oh, I think that this is one of the most exciting times for the museum uh, that we have. Uh, this means a great deal because it brings the community together. It brings the children down to be able to say, I've got a picture hanging in the Arlington Museum. It brings them and gives them a new lift as far as self-esteem, as far as being able to bring their parents out to some place other than school to see what they're doing. It also establishes a new vi uh, vitality for the teachers who teach this artwork to our children. I couldn't be more happy. We get excited every year at this time because we know that the museum is gonna be filled with parents, teachers, and students. And that's what you wanna see. When you don't have the children's show here, you have lots of different um, other artists that come in. Can you tell us a little bit about that? This year, more than likely, we're gonna be able to have a show that is a traveling show that is going to be part of Rembrandt sketches. Oh, nice. Yes, 
and we're planning on having that during a period of time that we also have art camp. And for uh, those who don't know what art camp is, every year we partner with AISD and uh, and the children and we have certified teachers who teach the art camp and at the same time they'll be able to be exposed to some very great art. So uh, we're looking forward to that as well and that starts directly after school is over and goes all the way for six weeks and we have like four classes a day. So. Very nice. Well, it sounds like there's some are amazing opportunities here, some great culture to take in. Come and support the Arlington Art Museum. Thank you so much for speaking with me. Oh, you're very welcome. Isn't this wonderful? Yes, my piece is I'm rising from the water, most likely. It's just like a river or something like that. And I come out, you know, like reborn or just happy, just filled with joy, while inside the water is just a whole bunch of doubt and fear and just a whole bunch of negative things and I just burst out of the water just like hey you know I feel better now and that's just a reflection of my sad sorrows right there as you can see and here goes me just happy as can be pretty much pretty nice that is very deep um, and tell me a little bit about what medium did you use oh I used a little bit of shadowing right here just like okay the face it was really hard to do cuz I had to show light from right here and I kept on getting a little bit darker on this side right here. So I had to shade it a little bit into it so I could just blend in. So I could just make it perfect. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Very nice. And then was it chalk or charcoal? What were you using? It was more of, more like vine charcoal. It was very hard to, you know, work, but I got used to it. And it was mostly of just pure chalk just going like all around it. Very nice. What well, is a very touching piece. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. No problem. Good job. <laughs> My artwork is uh, double chair stacked with each other. I use blending in colors and it was partially easy to do. So I work a lot with that artwork and that's basically it. Yeah. Very nice. And then, um, so what was the medium that you used? I used blending in. And then was it chalks or what? Pastel, chalks. Very nice. And was that your first time to work with those? Yes, ma'am. Well, how would you think? It was pretty hard at first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. And is it your first time to have artwork at the art show? Yes, ma'am. It is. What do you think about having your artwork already at an art museum? It feels amazing. I think so too. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me. No problem. What did you use to make it? Uh, I made it out of clay and I painted it. So, um, all right, and then did you put a, a form back behind it as you were building it, or do you tell us a little bit about how you made it? Yeah. Uh, well, I made uh, kind of this paper machete form first, and I uh, formed the clay around that, and then, and then uh, I cut out the eyes and the thingy here um, and basically from there on I cut this stuff out and uh, scratched the bottom put kind of mud on there and stuck it on and did that with these two then I dried it. So. Naya can you tell me a little bit about your piece that you have here tonight? Well I thought like that there's so much darkness around us and that one person can make a difference so she's holding light and so hopefully like when she opens her arms light will like surround everything. Very nice. Now is this a self-portrait? Um, not necessarily but it kind of looks like me a little bit. Well, that's what I was thinking. I thought it looked like you a lot and then um, what was your your lesson that you were working on? What was your theme? Um, how to make the world a better place. It's like what Martin Luther King was doing one speech at a time, and because he was African American, it just, it's like being different is okay sometimes. Excellent, I couldn't have said that any better. Awesome, very, very nice. And then for our younger viewers, what did you use to add the color? I used colored pencils, lots of colored pencils, and a lot of value and shading, and um, fading, a lot with white and purple, and light and dark. 
Very nice. Is this your first time to have artwork here? Yes. What do you think about that? It's cool. I feel all formal. <laughs> but can you tell me a little bit about your piece? Well, I had to draw it because I thought it would be like an inspiration for a peaceful place where you can like sit back and relax. Very nice. And um, can you, for our younger viewers, can you tell us a little bit about how you made it? Well, it was kind of difficult carving it out and like drawing it. It took me a while and it took practice for a while. And you'll get to learn like up in age. Okay. And then was it on a linoleum piece or wood or what was your block? Um, linoleum. Linoleum. Very nice. And was it your first time to do a piece kind of like this? Yeah. What did you think? At first it was like easy and then like sooner or later uh, where the small parts are, that got hard. Yes. And it's also, I, I have a hard time with these because you have to kind of think in reverse. Yeah. You know, very nice. And um, have you had artwork in any of the other shows before? No, this is my first. Very nice. Well, welcome. We're so glad to have you. Thank you. We started with shading, put crayons on the table, and uh, draw, drew still life, and pre had pretty much fun with it. <laughs> Very nice. Now, did you, did you all get to design, design, I should say, your crayons, or were they already stacked there for you previously, or what? I stacked them in the table, yeah. They were stacked previously, and just drew them, how they w looked with the shadows. And light from one side and the darkness from the other side. Excellent job. Is this your first time to have artwork at the Art Museum? Mm, my second time was in fourth grade. Oh, very nice. So you're a repeat customer. Se second time is this. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you. Mitchell, this is an awesome color wheel that you've got here. Can you tell us a little bit about how you came up with the idea? Um, I wanted to do the art because we were in art class and I thought that would be kind of clever so yeah. Very clever and what were y'all working on when you created this? Um, we were learning about the tints and shades of colors and like blue greens and yellows and stuff so. Very nice. Was this your first time to mix tints and shades? Yes ma'am. I think you did pretty good. Janie you have got an amazing penguin here. Can you tell us a little bit about how you made it? Uh. To make the hat and the earmuff, I used fabric to cut it out for the earmuffs. I just made a circle with it. Well, it was easy when I folded it and I just cut it into an oval. Very nice. And then what is this working on? Uh, paper. So you're working on a collage? Yeah. He's all bundled up and he's ready for the winter. Jacob, you have got a beautiful piece here. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I wasn't really planned to make the mountain, but like uh, I used the purple to make the mountain and then I put green over it and it kind of showed that and uh, then my art teacher told me that kind of looks like a mountain so maybe you should just outline it and it'll look like one. And so I did that and it looks like a mountain. Very nice. And what kind of paper were you using? Uh, it was uh, a type of tissue paper. Very good. So it's kind of transparent so you could see through it to see those other colors. And what kind of colors were you using? Cool colors. Very good. So lots of blues and greens and purples. Very, very nice. And then what is this right here? Uh, I used black paper and then we got some markers that with blue green and purple. Very nice. Is it a sailboat? Yes. I thought it was a sailboat. It looks just like one. Thank you so much for talking with us tonight. You're welcome. Tell me a little bit about it. The wind is movement and and it's like um it's a uh, the trees are like backward if like they're like the um, trunk is like like on top. It looks like it's like going backwards, and like if it goes like forward to the snow, like much um, forward to the snow, like back, like down a little. Then it makes like it's like close, and that's all. And what did you use to make these awesomely colorful trees? Um, tissue paper, and you, and you um, put glue on it, like to make it shiny. Oh, very nice. This is a really nice piece. You should be very proud of it. Thank you.
Lucy, this is a beautiful picture that you have here at the museum tonight. Can you tell me a little bit about how you made it? Yes, I love art and I'm a very good artist and and I love the color and um, I really like those colors so I just made it that way. Who is this in this picture? A tooth fairy. I love it. That is very, very nice. Thank you so much for sharing it with us tonight. Molly, tell me a little bit about your, your still life that you have here. Um, well, it's like just like a bowl like that we had like to create. We had to like make something up and so I thought something different instead of like making it look more like a vase, make it look like something else and something like bright colors and so yeah. Very good. Now your paper, I'm noticing that your paper is all wrinkly. How did you do that? Um, we had to take it and crumble it up and like we could stomp on it and everything, so yeah. Great. Did you stomp on yours? Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. And then what did you use to add the color? Do you remember? Um, uh, we did oil pastels and then after we colored it, we did paint. Very nice. Well, you did a fabulous job. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Thank you. Emma, this is fabulous. Tell me a little bit about how you made it. Um, we had to cut a piece of paper and then turn it into like a 3D chair and then we, my art teacher got out a big book of like um, just wallpaper samples and then I turned it kind of into a room and then all my, like what I wanted it to be kept on changing so it ended up just to be a bunch of different things in a, the same room with just a chair in the middle. So like there's zebras and then music notes and then ice cream so. Great. This it looks like a very eclectic ice cream shop. I like it though, and you've got it looks like you've got your flavors listed here. Let's let that's your menu, and you've got Sundays over here. Did everybody make a chair? Yeah, but we could make it like whatever kind of chair we wanted or whatever. So very nice. I just wanted a simple one so that it kind of go so that it be in contrast with the rest of it. Very very nice. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Thanks. Tell me about this piece of artwork that you have. How'd you make it? Um, first we um, did Sharpie and we made a line in the middle. Next we um, put five colors outside the Sharpie line and then we put lots of patterns um, around the line. Very, very nice. And how did you know that this was going to be colored but this would just stay black and white? Was that your idea? No, it was Miss Randall's idea. Miss Randall's idea. That was a genius idea. And you were only in the second grade? This looks like something a fifth grader would do. It's beautiful. Is this your first time to have artwork at the art show? No, my second year. Second, well that explains it. You're just a pro at it. That's what it is. Jose, tell me a little bit about this cat that you have up on the wall. How did you make it? Oh, with colors and, and I paint it. And you painted it? Did you start out with a pencil drawing or did y'all draw with a crayon? We paint with the paintbrush. Okay, and then when you started to draw your cat, did you break it down like into little shapes? I think I just draw it. You just drew, you're just that good. You just drew it right away. I love it. And then do you remember what kind of colors you were using? Um, black, brown, uh, blue, gray. Uh, Green, orange, yellow, gray again. Green. I, it looks like you got most all of them up there. You did a really great job. Thank you so much for sharing it with us tonight. Andrea, can you tell me a little bit about your piece? Well, uh, what we did was like um, when we were doing like an art class, we used like uh, green and then we mixed it in with different colors, black, uh, white, and like a little kind of gray. And then that's how I got light colors. And then like the remaining parts where we didn't have any leaves, uh, we put, like we used a dark color to so like it can show it out more. Very good, so you were mixing tints and shades. You did a really great job. Thank you so much for sharing it with us tonight.
Welcome back to our third and final show of Youth Art Encounters. We are here for our last show. It is our Martin and Sam Houston cluster. Let's go check it out. And we are here with Star from Carter Junior High, and you've got a great picture here tonight. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Um, what inspired me was that I kind of love the ocean scenery, and I like the idea of dragons. I mean, dragons are cool and all, and my love for the ocean and dragons came together to make this beautiful paint, this beautiful watercolor painting. Very nice. Now, was this your first time to work to work with watercolor? Yes. What did you think? Um, it was kind of difficult. I wasn't able to get the colors exactly how I wanted, but it still turned out amazing. It did. You did a very nice job. I, you've actually got two pieces here tonight. Have you had artwork at the art shows before? Is this your first time? This is my first time. First time, two pieces. That's pretty awesome. Congratulations. Thanks for talking with us. No problem. Erica, tell me a little bit about your piece. Well, in art class, we were using this method about... Um, you take some verbs, some nouns, and some adjectives, and then you try to form a sentence with it. And mine was, future queen, jealous of the free world around her. Very nice. And so this, is, this was your interpretation of that. And what supplies did you use to make this? I used um, Crayola colored pencils, and that's pretty much it. Very nice. Now, is this your first time to have our work in the art show? Yes, ma'am. That surprises me. This is such an unusual piece and it's very strong. I like it a lot. It surprises me that this is your first time. But congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you so much for talking with us. You're welcome. And we have Samantha here with us who is from Young Junior High. Tell me a little bit about your piece that you have here tonight. Um, it's two, well it's three 3D letters. Um, it's letter E and it has two skeletons playing chess on it. And um, I made it to where it's not really possible is the, they overlap each other in places where they wouldn't actually be able to overlap each other in life. So it's, you kind of look at it and it gives you a weird view. So. Very nice. Now when you guys were working on this, were you working on line, shape, form, pattern? What were, what were your ideas that you kind of started this off? I'm um, just, just like 3D boxes. So as we just kind of went from there with letters. Very nice. Now do you have a favorite artist? No. No? Do you just like them all? Do you gravitate towards more abstract or more realistic? Definitely abstract. No. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for talking with us tonight. You're welcome. <laughs> you, it looks like to me it was more of a collage. So you you started off with the central character. What is all of this up here? Actually, I started out with this, and I just uh, went from there, and I thought it would be cool. And Do these things, these images represent anything? No, I just thought uh, put some uh, comedy into the artistic world. I like it. Very nice. Is this your first time to have artwork at the art show? Yeah. Very nice. Well, congratulations and thanks for sharing it with us. You're welcome. Good job. Lydia, tell me a little bit about your art that you have here tonight. Well, it's oil pastel and we were studying impressionists, so it's in that style. And yeah. Very good. And now for our younger viewers that may not know what impressionistic art looks like, can you kind of give them an idea of what it looks like? Um, it's your way of looking at the world. It's You do what you see, not necessarily what's really there, but it's not quite as, um, it's not quite as dramatic as Picasso. Nowhere near. <laughs> very nice. All right. And so you use oil pastel and I see lots of water, which was very typical for the impressionist. Very good. And um, is this your first time to have artwork at the art show? Um, no, I've had it before when I was in first grade. Very nice. And now here you are all the way in high school and you're back again. That's awesome. Thanks for being a repeat customer. I love it. Thanks. Zach, tell me a little bit about your artwork that you have here tonight. Well, I, I'm glad with what it looked like. I got everything, like the shading, all of it, perfect the way I want it. Um, I was very thorough with it. It took me several weeks. Um, they used like different shades of values of where the light hit the face, and uh, I really enjoy it. I love it. Very nice. Now, when you guys started this project, were you working on value and shading, or what was your project? Yeah, we were working with. Um, contour and shading and different ways to use the charcoals and to make it more efficient. On Very nice. Was this your first time to work with the charcoals? Yes, it was. What would you think? 
messy, but I got better with it. I got better. It's definitely one you have to work with in order to work it out. Do you um, have a favorite artist that kind of inspires you with your art? Rem yeah, I love Rembrandt. Very nice. Now, how did you come up with what your background was going to be? I just went all went all out, you know, just different patterns and stuff. But very nice. Is this your first time to have artwork here? Yes, it is. What do you think about having artwork at an art museum already? I'm just, you know, surprised it, it made it here, you know. Oh, I'm not at all. It's very, very nice. Do you see yourself pursuing, um, you know, an art career? Yeah, I plan on, once I graduate from art, and I plan on going to the Art Institute. Awesome. Graphic design. Very, very nice. Well, I'm glad that you started here with us. Thanks for talking with me tonight. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good job. Christopher, share with me a little bit about this painting that you have here tonight. My inspiration was Chinese New Year. I started, I did, and then I painted over with watercolor. Very nice. Was it your first time to work with watercolor? Um, yes. Yeah. What did you think? I think I did good. I think you did excellent. Did you think it was challenging or did it come pretty naturally for you? It was challenging because, yeah. It's a hard medium to control. It's like you, it's hard to control it. And then, so you told me a little bit about that it, you were inspired by the Chinese New Year. I see that you've got dragons and I see koi fish and different elements like that. I like the, I like Chinese New Year. So I decided to put the stuff I like in there. Very nice. That sounds like a great place to start with some inspiration. Thank you so much for talking with us tonight. Mariana is from Miller, my sweet girl. Tell me a little bit about your piece that you have here tonight. First, it's called a print. And like we just started off with a, on a piece of paper drawing a bird. And then we got a piece of styrofoam. And then we would carve, carve it in there. And then we would grab markers and we would wet it and then we would like pat it on there so it could so the markers and the water could mix and make the color full very nice and then whenever you started with your bird and you broke it down into shapes and then how did you come up with your patterns that you were going to put around the edges i just didn't know what to start with first so i just like started making unique shapes and all that and like I try to make flowers but in a different shape like a triangle you know very nice very creative I thank you so much for sharing it with us tonight you're welcome good job Tyler tell me a little bit about your sunflowers that you have here I'm a, we like I'm a, made uh, the stems and then we put the circles and then we color the first part brown and then we put the middle black and then we like do the pointy things around it and then like and then you can make it like as much as you want and then you can write your name here or there you, and you could um like draw the, the part for the table and uh like draw the table and uh put um a little painting dots and then you could like um, very, very nice and then it looks like um, you did a little bit of collaging because you added this on here. Anna, this is very nice. Can you tell me a little bit about how you made it? I made it like from glitter. So you probably started out with a pencil drawing, right? I, and then it looks like you kind of came, is this crayon that you have here? Yeah. Okay. And then what's the significance of these people that are down here? What's going on there? Reflection. Very good. And so this is like a pond. It's all glittery and it's like the pond and it's reflecting their image in there. Yeah. Very nice. You did a great job of working on reflection. That's kind of hard to do, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Is this your first time to have artwork at the art show? Yes. What do you think? Good. It's good. <laughs> Very nice. Well, thanks for sharing it with us tonight. Praise, tell me a little bit about this self-portrait. I made it with um, pastel um, things. Very nice. And how did you kind of start off your self-portrait? For the face, I started with an oval, and I just did a bunch of shapes. Very nice. Now, when you did your oval, did y'all divide your oval up so that you knew where to put the eyes and the nose? I, we did it by um, a gaff. Very nice. I like it. And then how did you come up with what things you were going to put in your background? Well, my art teacher um, just told us to put like leaves and like a um, dark colored background. 
very nice. Now, is this your first time to have artwork in the art show? Yes. What do you think about that? I think it's cool. I think it is too. I really like your art. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. I started out with paint, then crayon, then marker. Did you draw them out in pencil first? Yes, sir. Now, how did you come up with what their body was going to look like? Uh, like a bubble X. And then it looks like they're turning somersaults. How did you do that? Why, uh, I do the same X, but uh, their heads are doing the, se the another direction. So really their heads are the only thing that moved, right? Very, very nice. Now, how did you decide that you were going to make this bottom part, this pattern, and up here a different pattern? A little bit. I copied my uh, my my um, art teacher, but I did all the rest. Very, very nice. Well, thank you for sharing it with us tonight. It's beautiful. You're welcome. Good job. Erica, this is a fabulous self-portrait that you have. Can you tell us how you made it? I did a circle for the head. That's a great place to start. Then what? Then I did my neck. And then I did my shoulders and my elbows. And this is a self-portrait. So I see that you've got your beautiful little haircut and these beautiful glasses. And sh where are you standing? At the park. And who is this? I'm very curious about this little fella right there. Lucy. Oh, it's a it's a girl. I am so sorry. Lucy is there with you at the park. That is very, very nice. And is this your first time to have artwork at the art show? Yes. What do you think about having your artwork hung at the museum? Happy. You're very happy? I think that it's very, very nice. I would be very happy, too. Thank you for sharing it with us. Dylan. This is such a fabulous piece of art. Can you tell me a little bit about how you made it? Well, I just wanted some shapes. The, um, because I usually don't put shapes in my art. And um, I put some primary colors on the, um, the black. And um, I use um, pearl as um, stale to um, treat, um, like, make, go around it. And I, I think that's all. That's all. And then, so you said that you started out with this interesting shape right here, but it, you have some nice balance going on right here, and you've got some shapes over here that create some good symmetry that you got going there. Is this your first time to have artwork at the art show? Yes. What do you think about that? Great. Earlier, you were, you were bent over, holding your knees and giggling. Is that how you feel about having your artwork here tonight? Yeah. I like it. Well, thank you so much for talking with me about it. Thank you. And we are here with Lynn Wynn, our fine arts coordinator. And Lynn, how, is, how are the shows going this time? It's been phenomenal, Angie. We you know the last two shows we had 3,000 people, and tonight we have 1,300. So a total of 4,500 people attend the show, and and then and, and the work is incredible. I mean, the teachers did a great job this year, and the students really produced some incredible work. And all the parents are here, and the, and, and the smiles are just priceless tonight. But in the summer, they have different kinds of art classes here for the kids. Can you tell us a little bit about you know what you know about that? Sure. First and foremost, the Museum AIS has a great partnership. I mean, each year we collaborate and provide summer camp for our students. And it's open to the public also. And so it's a great time for our kids um, to be creative in the summertime, give them an outlet at the museum. Um, we have over you know, 500 kids attend the summer camp. Great opportunity for our kids. And we have our teachers teach it. And so it's a great balance of curriculum for AIS and the museum together. So it's a great opportunity for our kiddos. Now throughout the year we've got lots of opportunities to display artwork and one of the shows that's coming up is the Capitol Show. So um, really awesome opportunity for our art program. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. We, we um, with Diane Patrick, um, have a great partnership. Um, this is the fourth year we've done the Capitol Show where we select one piece from each campus to represent the elementary level and then we take a field trip with the parents the day it opens and they tour the Capitol, they tour the art show and they all, we also have lunch with Diane Patrick in the conference room and they get an award and then we come back that evening. So it's a great time for our kids to see the state capitol, great connection with social studies and, and, and to be recognized for their talents at the gallery. 
Excellent. That is such a neat opportunity for our students. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Angie. Always. As Pablo Picasso once said, give me a museum and I will fill it. And that is exactly what our students have done here. There is so much artwork here. There is no way that we could possibly show it all to you. So make sure that you make a point to come back next year and check out this amazing show that we have here. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Angie Beam. Now go out and make some amazing art.